a mobile task force makes its way through the Siberian forest. Snow covers the trees. The only light comes from the moon shining through the branches. The commander holds up a hand signaling the team to halt. In a small clearing in front of them is the creature they've been searching for. It appears to be part deer, part human. The creature howls in pain as it rips the skin from its body. The SCP agents watch it in horror as the creature reaches its arm high into the air and plunges a knife into its stomach. It doubles over in pain and stops screaming. The creature pulls the knife from its midsection and stands upright. Blood splatters across the shimmering white snow. It turns towards the mobile task force and slowly walks towards them. Help me, the creature whispers. I need you to save me from what's inside. It collapses to the ground. The mobile task force secures the creature in a containment vehicle in preparation for further examination. This is SCP-1068-RU, Shell of God. When they arrive with the creature to an undisclosed SCP Foundation site location, Dr. Belkov is put in charge of learning more about the entity. When SCP-1068 first awakens in its containment chamber, Belkov is watching from behind a two-way mirror. The creature walks up to the mirror and examines the countless scars and stitches that cover its body. SCP-1068 shakes its head and gingerly runs a long finger along the fresh wound where it stabbed itself earlier. It glances around the room as if looking for something, then turns back towards the two-way glass. What time is it? It asks its reflection. Dr. Belkov knows that the creature is talking to him. It may not know who is watching him, but it knows there is someone there. Dr. Belkov pauses for a moment. What harm can it do to tell the time, he thinks. Belkov pushes the intercom button and speaks. You've been in there for almost six hours, he says into the microphone. SCP-1068 looks startled. Its eyes open wide as it scans the room again. You need to let me out of here, it shouts. Quickly, or you will all be in danger. The creature starts to bang on the glass, causing Dr. Belkov to take a few steps back. There is fear in its eyes that terrifies the doctor. Belkov tentatively walks back towards the intercom button and pushes it. I'm not sure it'd be safe to let you out quite yet, my friend. Why don't you tell me what's going on? There is no time! SCP-1068 screams. I, I, I can feel him coming! Just as it finishes the sentence, SCP-1068 stumbles backward. Dr. Belkov looks on in horror as the creature's stomach begins to expand, as if something is pushing on it from the inside. A set of claws rips through its skin from within. Warning lights begin to flash in the observation room. The temperature around SCP-1068 has plummeted. The fluorescents in the containment chamber start to flicker. The howls of the creature are accompanied by the screeching of something else. Whoever is trying to crawl out of SCP-1068 is fighting hard to complete their task. SCP-1068 swings the knife tied around its wrist into its hand. It begins stabbing at whatever is trying to burst out of it, causing blood and skin to be thrown across the room. The creature opens its mouth and lets out a cry of pain. This goes on for several minutes before whatever is inside SCP-1068 retreats back to where it came from. SCP-1068 stands in the room panting. It opens the satchel at its waist and pulls out a bone needle and string. It meticulously begins to sew up the wounds from the knife. Dr. Belkov watches. Panic fills him as he slams the intercom button. What the hell was that? He asks. That, my dear friend, was my brother. With those words hanging in the air, Dr. Belkov furiously jots down notes. He needs to learn more. Belkov runs out of the observation room and grabs two SCP agents to accompany him into the chamber of SCP-1068. He needs to examine the creature and find out what is going on within it. When Dr. Belkov and the two agents enter the room, SCP-1068 shows no signs of aggression. Although the creature has a masculine voice, its chest and other human parts seem to be female. Its entire body is covered in stitched-up wounds. However, Dr. Belkov can see into one of the fresh punctures that SCP-1068 made to itself. The creature looks at him and shakes its head. You have no idea how much danger you are in, it says. We want to help you. My name is Dr. Belkov and I work for the SCP Foundation. Can I examine that wound? SCP-1068 looks at the doctor, considering his question. I have nothing to hide, but be aware, you might not like what you see. Dr. Belkov nods his head. He holds up a flashlight and shines it into SCP-1068's wound. What he sees gives him pause. 
There are no bones, organs, or muscles of any type under the creature's skin. The space inside the body seems to be infinite. Perhaps it is a deep void to another dimension, Belkov thinks. As he gets closer to the wound, he can feel a cold breeze leaving SCP-1068's body. Do you mind? Belkov asks while holding up a thermometer. The creature shrugs indifferently. Belkov tries to take the temperature just beneath the creature's skin, but it is so cold that it causes the mercury in the thermometer to freeze. The doctor furiously writes notes into his log. SCP-1068 finishes stitching up its wounds. The creature sits back in its chair. I'm sure you have some questions. Let me start by introducing myself. I am I Neil. I come from an ancient tribe that inhabited the area where you found me many moons ago. So you've been around for a while? Belkov asks. That is correct. I lived with my seven brothers and a small tribe of humans deep in the Siberian Arctic. My brothers and I were wiser and more skilled than anyone else in the tribe. We eventually became deities to them. I was the patron saint of seamstresses and a warming shoulder for the people. Unfortunately, not all of my brothers were kind. I think I see where this is going, says Dr. Belkov. In my experience, there is always one who betrays the rest when it comes to beings with special powers. You may be more right than you know, says I, Neil, shaking his head. For a long time, there was peace and harmony, but then the great grief happened. My brother, whom I will not speak the name of, was the master of the hunt. He believed that since he provided life-sustaining sustenance for everyone, he should be the ruler of the tribe. I was the closest to this brother, so he asked me to join him as his second-in-command. I refused. I assume that probably didn't make him too happy, says Belkov. No, it did not. He was furious and slaughtered everyone in the tribe, including the women and children. Then he began to kill his own brothers. He butchered our whole family, and then eventually came for me too. I could not match his combat skills, but I had a plan. We battled for many nights. I waited for the perfect opportunity, and when my brother lunged at me in blind rage and frustration, I knew it was the moment I was waiting for. I ripped open my stomach, and he fell into the void. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick, gags Belkov. Are you telling me that thing inside you is your brother? That's exactly what I'm saying, sighs I, Neil. How long has it been in you? asks Belkov. Too long. That is why I have sought the help of the SCP Foundation. My brother cannot escape, otherwise the whole world will be doomed. Dr. Belkov leans back in his chair and whistles. He can't believe what he is hearing, but at the same time, this wouldn't be the craziest thing he has witnessed at the Foundation. Now you must leave the room, says I, Neil. It's almost time for my brother to try and escape again. It happens every six hours, and if I do not stop him, he will destroy us all. Dr. Belkov and the agents leave the room. Once the door is closed, I, Neil begins to scream. He looks down at his stomach as his brother rips through his insides. An audio recorder in the room picks up a conversation between I, Neil and his brother as they battle. They are talking in their native language. Several days later, Dr. Belkov retrieves the audio and sends the recording to the linguistics department to be decoded. For several days, Dr. Belkov watches I, Neil battle his brother every six hours. The brother rips through the stomach lining of SCP-1068 with its claws. I, Neil stabs him using his knife, and after the bloody battle is over, I, Neil sews himself up and rests until the next attempted escape. Dr. Belkov sits in the observation room flipping through his notes when he comes across a report from the linguistics department. He had forgotten all about the recording, but he reads the translation. His heart sinks. What in the name of God, he says out loud. The conversation that was recorded during the battle didn't make any sense. A muffled voice could be heard saying, Think it over, fool. Because of your selfishness, we will all die. The cycle must not be broken. Let me be reborn. This was clearly the pleading of I, Neil's brother, but it is the next words that truly terrified Dr. Belkov. They believe your lies. Isn't that enough for you? The next sounds that the recorder picked up were the stabbing of flesh and screams of pain. Dr. Belkov shakes his head. So I knew is lying about something? Belkov thinks. Could he be evil? Perhaps the characters in his story were switched. What if I knew was the one who slaughtered? Before he can finish his thought, there is a loud crash as the two-way mirror shatters. Standing in the opening is SCP-1068. His eyes have changed. Now they are filled with evil. Oh, Doctor, I'm sorry it has come to this, but I can't let you live when you are so close to the truth, says I, Neil. 
The creature steps through the opening into the observation room. Dr. Belkov screams as the knife plunges into his stomach. Now watch SCP-2273 Major Alexei Belitrov SCP Animation, or check out SCP-610 The Flesh That Hates SCP Animation.